seven different ways you can regenerate land to create healthy living soil for growing vegetables, trees, crops or pasture. Eight years ago, I bought this abandoned land which had rocky areas with brush, no trees, and the flat areas were rented out to a farmer who ploughed every year and planted grains. All of this area had degraded soil and just grains. And using cover crops, composting, various methods with animals, bringing in organic matter, chopping and dropping, we have regenerated the soil and created food systems such as this food forest, agroforests, vegetable gardens, and healthy pasture. I hope you enjoy this video. If you have any questions or comments along the way, please leave them below and do remember to subscribe. One way in which we can regenerate soil is utilizing cover crops, such as this red clover that we have planted here between our swales with trees on in our agroforest plantation. Cover crops such as clovers are generally nitrogen fixing plants which get nitrogen from the atmosphere. So there is bacteria living on the roots that take nitrogen from the air and transfer that into the plants. So these plants, when you cut them back, add nitrogen to the ground. Not all cover crops are nitrogen fixers. Some of them just create biomass. They just grow a lot of leaves and you cut them back and that adds organic matter to the soil, which enriches the soil. This can be done in alley crops like this, in your vegetable gardens or in pasture. And the way that we do this is we prepare the soil just before the rains in autumn. So we do that by adding some compost and other organic amendments such as lime to make this soil more alkaline as we have acidic soil. We plant the seed just before the rains then you wait for it to grow and in something like February we have two options. One, we can chop and drop and leave it there and that's going to add the most biomass here. Another option is if you have animals to graze, you can graze the animals through here so they get a high protein feed and leave some manure on their way. And then you wait again till like May for the first flower to come. When the first flower has come, we want to chop and drop that or bring the animals through again because we don't want to wait for all of the flowers to come because that's going to use up more nitrogen than it, the nitrogen fixer cover crop is actually created. So we want to chop it all down just before they all go to flower. And then we can either rotate it in and get that organic matter in the soil to plant a crop. Or if we're not going to do that, we leave it to grow back again and potentially go to seed. In this scenario, it's the first time I planted the cover crop in this plantation and I want it to stay a few years. So I didn't chop and drop it at all this year because I want the maximum amount of flowers and seeds for those to drop and increase the seed bank here. The second way we can regenerate our soil ready for planting is through composting. I used to compost in a fixed area. And what we find is around that area, you get dead soil and nitrates being released into the soil. So what I do now is I take my compost to where I'm next going to plant. And then every time we turn the compost and we turn it a lot of times, it moves through the area. And what that does is it leaves in its wake a layer of compost and nitrates washed down into the soil to regenerate the soil. So after anywhere that this has happened, I always get the longest grass. So here I'm doing it through an alley crop in an agroforest plantation, but I also do this in a vegetable garden or a new food forest. So we get the compost pile at one end and we turn it through. And then when it's ready, we take it where we need it. And then we continue to do that over and over again in different areas of the farm. As we have sheep and we have a lot of land, we are doing something like 25 compost piles every year and they get around 15 turns. So that's covering a lot of space. The third way we can regenerate soil is through moving our sheep pen through the pasture for where they sleep at night. So for example, in this area here, we had the sheep pen 
outside and every night we put the sheep away there and we give them a little bit of um, straw to eat or hay and then any hay that's left over we cover the floor where they've pooed and they sleep there for about three days so you end up with about a centimeter thick of manure on the ground and every three days we move it sometimes we move it more regularly sometimes less regularly and over a few months we go through an entire field and what that that does is make them eat everything and also leave a nice thick layer of organic matter on the top and after you do that the next year everything grows back incredibly well so this is a really good method for doing this because it gives the sheep somewhere clean to sleep and we don't have to make compost piles and move compost through our land. The fourth way on a larger scale, such as this pasture here, is to create swales. So these are ditches which are along the contour line. So this ditch doesn't go uphill or downhill, it goes along the contour line, curves around the same level and these ditches capture water that, that rains onto this or runs off the field and it spreads it around the field and then it slowly sinks in. So such as this spot here where there's quite a bit of water right now is actually a few days after a heavy rain and had this ditch not been here this water would have run off down the field and taken with it topsoil and organic matter but because these swales are here the water is stored higher up in the landscape and any runoff of topsoil gets stored in these swales. Eventually, we should plant trees along these mounds just below the swale, like we have in the agroforest you saw earlier. But first, we need to improve the soil as it's so bad here before we plant trees. And over a few years, hopefully this ditch will actually be full of organic matter that's washed down and it'll be a good time for us to then plant the trees. I love this method with the swales because it's just one day's work to mark out all the swales and then dig them with a tractor and then you can just leave nature to do its thing whilst you focus on other areas of the farm. The fifth way which we can regenerate soil is through bringing organic matter in and that can just be from mulching and using organic materials that you have, such as this broom that we brought down on this field from the rocky area up behind me. But we, when we did this area, which was an alley between two swales in this field, what we actually did is first tested the soil and we found out it was very acidic. So we add some lime to increase the pH. And then we added some worm castings to bring in more microbes here and life for the soil and then we brought a two cubic meters of compost which we made from the sheep and spread that here to increase the amount of nutrients in the ground and then we covered that with a nice thick layer of broom which is a fire hazard we've had to cut from our boundaries and rocky areas so we dragged that down here and covered the soil and we actually only did it one month here and the sheep are actually grazing here right now and you can see the grass is slightly longer here but this will have in one year much longer grass than the swell below. Interestingly enough we're also seeing things like wild orchids growing here which is absolutely beautiful. The sixth way to regenerate land is through using sheep with herd grazing. So if you didn't have animals you're going to cut all the grass, leave it to decompose, and that's going to add a lot of organic matter to the ground. But if you do have animals, you need them to eat something. So they'll eat the grass and then they'll poo and pee in their way, fertilizing the land, which fertilizes it less than cutting the grass, but it does give you feed for the animals and protein to eat. But if you have too many sheep for an area and leave them there for too long, they're going to overgraze. They're going to cut the grass too short and it's not going to grow back healthy. If you have a large area and not enough sheep, they're going to undergraze. So they'll go around eating their favorite food and not letting those go to seed. And then the food they don't like will grow and go to seed, which will, you'll end up in a few years with a whole field of food sheep don't eat. So the best thing to do is to try to keep them in a smaller area 
for a shorter time where they eat everything down not too low and then move them on. I can't really show you this here because there are only a few sheep behind me because the rest of them are sitting in the shade as it's quite warm. If you don't have the sheep on a herd grazing uh, rotation, what you need to do is after they leave the pasture, follow through and cut all the grass so that grasses they don't eat don't go to seed. The seventh way is with trees, specifically nitrogen fixing trees, such as this tagazaste behind me, or this honey locust. This is a nitrogen fixing tree, which is gonna go really big, and it's gonna have nitrogen fixing bacteria living on the roots, which gets nitrogen from the air, and that actually ends up in the leaves of the plant. So as the leaves drop, it's going to spread nitrogen fertilizer and organic matter all over the area. So every single field I have, whether it's pasture, agroforest, food forest or vegetable garden, has multiple different species of nitrogen fixers, which in the more long term is going to drop a lot of leaves on the ground and improve the soil without us actually having to do any of these other steps. So I really recommend planting nitrogen fixers and they are also all very good animal fodder. So in the summer when everything's dry and there's no green grass, we'll have an unlimited amount of green high protein feed from the trees for our animals. And the best way for us to regenerate soil is to use a combination of all of these methods. Variety is always best, and we need to keep doing it every year. When I bought this land, it was heavily plowed, and all of this was rye grass. So it was grown for grains and bales, and there were no trees in any of the fields. So in, in my zone two, you'll see agroforests with trees planted along all of the swales, but here, further away, where we're not planting trees, because we have stopped ploughing, it's now full of native trees which are growing by themselves. So not ploughing, the ground also is a really, really useful tool for us. Sometimes we do need to plough to plant crops or to perennial pastures or cover crops, but what we want to do is limit that as much as possible and try and allow the native trees to grow around which also have their function in regeneration through the microbial life that live on the roots and all the leaves that fall down and all the birds that sit on the trees and poo and bring seeds. In summary, all of these things are doing exactly the same thing. We're harvesting sunlight to grow organic matter, which then ends up in the soil, increasing the amount of organic matter in the soil and microbes in the soil. After a few years, we should have regenerated the soil and we can tell how well we've done through a soil test. But another way is just to see the diversity of what's growing there and how well it's growing. So at this point, we're ready to plant what we need there. So that could be a vegetable garden. So we, we might want to sheet mulch it or rotivate it all in and then plant. That might be a tree plantation. So we cut all the grass and dig the holes for the trees. It might mean crops, so we're going to plough it and plant the crops, or it might mean we want it for pasture. And for pasture, we might want to leave it as it is and rotate the animals through it, or perhaps the, the grasses that are growing there aren't the best, and what we can do is, as we have now good quality soil, plant a perennial pasture. And that would mean ploughing and planting a seed which has really good perennial grasses and nitrogen fixes that all have deep roots and are perennial. So this will be a one-time plow and plant of a higher quality seed, which would probably only grow well in already regenerated soil. And I really recommend doing this because these grasses improve the soil much more due to their deep roots and they grow back so much and this is a very good way to offset carbon as well. Here in Portugal and probably 
all over the world, you get more subsidies for growing perennial pastures than wild grasses. But you have to plant a specific seed mix, which is sold in the agricultural stores. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. You can also check out our residential courses here in Portugal to learn about permaculture, off-grid living and organic farming. Otherwise, you can check out some of our other videos such as this farm tour or our latest video here.